Okay, let's have a chat about Christmas stockings. So I've been crocheting for almost 10 years now, and I think every year I have said that I, <sighs> can you hear my bird clock? Cause that's really funny. That I'm gonna make Christmas stockings for my family. Um, and I just never quite get around to it. Well, I was feeling really inspired this year and I came up with these two designs and actually you could make this into three or four different designs depending on what kind of um, how you do the fair isle repeats and you could just do one plane without any fair isle repeats so um, let's get started my name is Heather from the Unraveled Men and I am going to show you how to make these so I'm using this Red Heart Super Saver yarn. This is just a basic worsted weight yarn. I have this um, cream color and a pretty green. And my 5.5 millimeter Furls Streamline Swirl Crochet Hook. If you haven't tried one of those, I highly recommend it. You're also going to need the printed crochet pattern or the pattern on my website pulled up. I'll put the link in the description box below. Um, let's get started. So you're going to chain four. And then we're going to join to the first chain with a slip stitch to form a ring. I like to do the chain four and join rather than a magic circle. I've had a few too many uh, magic circles come undone. So Next, you're going to make a chain one and then do eight half double crochets um, around the ring you just made. So going through the center of the ring, um, half double crochet, and then do that eight times around. Your chain one will not count as a stitch. All right, I like to give that a little tug when I'm all done with the first round and you should have eight half double crochets. So now we're gonna join to the top of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. All right, round two, chain one, make two half double crochets in that same stitch as chain one. and two. Now you're going to make two half double crochets in each stitch around your circle. So you'll end up with 16 half double crochets. And it's always a good idea to count your stitches at the end of your round. It's easy to do more or less. Um, join your round to the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. All right, round three, chain one. Make two half double crochets in the same stitch as chain one. One half double crochet in the next. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. And then you're just gonna repeat that around. You're gonna do one half double crochet, then two double crochets, and then one double, half, excuse me, half double crochet, don't do double crochets. And then at the end of this round, you will have 20, 24 half double crochets.
All right, and then join to the top of that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. All right, round four. This round we are just gonna put one half double crochet in each stitch, starting in that same stitch as our chain one. So again, we will end up with 24 half double crochet stitches. If you're enjoying this tutorial, be sure that you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you can get notified each time I release a new video or pattern or tutorial, you know, all the things. <laughs> um, join, now we're at the end of our round here. You can see that it's got a little bit of shape to it. Join to the top of that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. All right, round five. Okay, so we are gonna chain one and then make two half double crochets in the same stitch as chain one and then half double crochet in the next two stitches. And then two half double crochets in the same stitch. And then half double crochet in the next two. And you're just gonna repeat that around. All right, join to the top of your first half double crochet with a slip stitch. You should end this round with 32 stitches. All right, round six, chain one, two half double crochets in the same stitch as chain one. And then half double crochet in the next Three. You might begin to see a pattern here. And then two half double crochets in the next stitch. And then half double crochet in the next three. So you're just going to repeat that around the three half double crochets and then two half double crochets in the same stitch. And you'll end this round with 40 stitches. Join to the top of your first half double crochet with a slip stitch. If your hook will go in, there we go. All right, chain one, and then half double crochet in the same stitch as chain one and then half double crochet in each stitch around. No increases on this round. So you will end with the same amount of stitches you started with, which should be 40. And then we just have one more round for our toe and then we will move on to the foot portion of our stocking. Don't you hate that when that happens? <laughs> when it splits and... Okay, so join to the top of your first half double crochet with a slip stitch. Chain one, two half double crochets in the same stitch as chain one. And then you're going to half double crochet in the next four stitches. Three and four. And you're just going to repeat that. Two half double crochets 
double half double crochet in the next four. You're going to do that all the way around and you will end with 48 stitches. So after this round, we're going to be switching to our main color, which is that green color that I showed you at the beginning this is the color I chose. I guess you can use whatever color you want. That's the beauty of crochet, right? So grab your um, new yarn color and you're going to insert your hook into um, the top of your first half double crochet like you're going to join the row and instead of grabbing the the cream colored yarn the color you've been working with you're going to just drape the new color over top of your hook and just pull it through both loops ta-da easy peasy um, and then you can just keep going. Sometimes I like to drape that tail over top of my hook like that, but you don't have to. So chain one, and then you're going to single crochet in the back loop of that same stitch as your chain one. So the back loop is the loop that is in the back, the one farthest from you. And I like to give my little yarn tails a tug to make sure they're nice and tight. So single crochet in the back loop of each stitch all the way around. So we're going to work um, this foot these foot stitches, <laughs> this single crochet in the back loop, um, for a few more rounds, and then we're going to move on to the heel, which is worked in rows. All right, so once you get to the end of your round, you are going to join um, to the top of your first single crochet with a slip stitch, and you should end up with 48 stitches. So the next round, chain one, and we're going to do the same thing. So single crochet in the back loop of the same stitch as chain one, and then single crochet in the back loop of each stitch around. And you're just going to repeat um, the same row until you have, let's see, 23, 23 rounds, including your toe stitches. All right, so I worked ahead and I added a pretty little Fair Isle design, which I will get to later. Okay, I just wanted to pause right here. We're gonna be starting the heel of our stocking, which has worked in short rows. Yes, rows, not rounds. So we're gonna be using half of the amount of stitches of the our entire round, which is 24, is what we're gonna start with. And then we're gonna decrease that down to let's see to 12 stitches and it's going to look sort of like a pyramid shape like a step pyramid shape and then after that we're going to go back and we're going to pick up those stitches that we decrease and it's going to pull our um our our heel oh how do i want to word that we're gonna, it's going to pull it all together so it looks like a heel so let's let's get going um you're gonna join your your heel color to the 12th 12th stitch to the right of your join and just you can just join it just like we did um before when we joined our new color for the for the foot all right so insert your hook there in that 12th stitch to the right of your seam and then just drape your new color over top and pull it through your stitch and there you go so chain one maybe there we go 
and then um, you're going to do a single crochet in the same stitch as you joined your yarn in. So working through both loops this time, single crochet just like normal. Ooh, we got a hair stuck in there. Love when that happens. And then you're going to single crochet across in the next 23 stitches. So you'll have 24 stitches all together. Be sure that when you get to the seam that you do not put a, um, a single crochet in that slip stitch that you used to join your round. So don't put one right there. Skip ahead and put it in that first single crochet of the round. go 24 single crochets now we're going to start our decreases and it's going to look like a pyramid or a um i believe it's called a, a ziggurat i don't know we just did some uh, ancient egypt studies in in school with the kids so i believe that's what it's called <laughs> so chain one we're not, and we're going to turn. So chain, all right, chain one and turn, and we're going to skip the first stitch at the base of your chain one, and then single crochet in the next stitch and each stitch across until there's one stitch left. And we're going to skip that last stitch. So each Let's see, you're gonna do the same thing for a total of seven rows. Um, and each time you're gonna chain one, turn, single crochet, and um, you know, you're gonna skip that stitch at the base of your chain one, single crochet across, and skip the last stitch. Each row will decrease by two stitches. Um, your last decrease row, row seven, will have 12 stitches at the end. Um, don't get hung up on this little guy here. This little vertical stitch is, was actually your turning chain. You can see our steps starting to form. If you want written instructions for this, be sure to visit the link in my description box below. So chain one and turn. Skip that stitch at the base of your chain one. Single crochet across. Skip the last stitch of the row all the way until you have 12 stitches. Okay, so this is where we're gonna start um, increasing. We're gonna start pick up those stitches that we, that we dropped before. So chain one and turn. And then you're going to single crochet in the same stitches chain one and all the way across in each stitch let's zoom in a little bit here and then we're going to single crochet into the side of the row 
and into the skipped stitch and then slip stitch into um, the side of the next row. It'll make more sense once we get going. And then we're gonna turn and go back and do that same thing. So single crochet in the side, single crochet into the skipped stitch and then slip stitch into the side below. And we're just gonna go back and forth, back and forth until we pick up all 24 of our stitches. So single crochet in that same stitch as chain one and all the way across. Now we're going to single crochet into the side of your row. And it doesn't have to be exact. Just shove it in there and make a single crochet. Single crochet. And then we're gonna single crochet into that um, skipped stitch on, on the step. and then slip stitch into the side of the next row. And again, it doesn't have to be exact or in a certain spot, just put your hook in wherever it fits and make your slip stitch. And now we've picked up two stitches, so we have, should have 14 single crochets and now we're gonna go back and pick up stitches on the other side. Um, if you want to, grab a stitch marker and mark the last single crochet. Don't mark the slip stitch, mark the single crochet. This will um, make it easier to um, see where you need to start your next row. So chain one and turn. We're going to skip that slip stitch and single crochet into that um, last single crochet you made from the previous row. And then we're going to single crochet all the way across. All right, once we get to the end, and it looks like we've ran out of stitches, we're gonna go down the side and we're going to single crochet in the side of our row and in that skipped stitch and then put a slip stitch in the row, um, the, the side of the row below it. Single crochet, you don't have to be exact. And now single crochet into that last skipped single crochet. and then a slip stitch. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, just put it anywhere. And now you've picked up two more stitches. Now you should have 16 single crochets. chain one, turn, remember to skip the slip stitch, single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet all the way across.
Now single crochet into the side of your row. It doesn't have to be exact. Just put it anywhere. And then you're also going to single crochet in that um, skipped stair step stitch and then a slip stitch onto the side. And a slip stitch here. Now it's starting to have a little bit of shape, pulling all those stitches in. Now you should have 18 stitches. Now we're going to go back to the other side and do that same thing. Chain one, turn, skip the slip stitch, single crochet in the next one. and each stitch across. All right, now single crochet into the side just anywhere. I know it looks like it's a big jump, but it will all pull in. Now if we were making like a sock to wear, I might have you do a like a single crochet two together, but since this is a stocking and we're not going to be wearing it, it shouldn't matter. So single crochet in the side and in that skipped stitch and then slip stitch into um, the next row end. And then we're going to go all the way back across. So chain one, turn, skip the chain slip stitch, excuse me, and then single crochet in the next stitch and all the way across. The written instructions for this are all written out on my website. Um, single crochet into the, the side of the row. And then we're going to single crochet into that skipped stitch. And now instead of making a slip stitch into the side of the row, we're going to make a slip stitch into that um, same stitch as our single crochet. So chain one and turn we should have 22 single crochets right now. and single skip the slip stitch and single crochet into the next stitch and all the way across the row. We're going to be picking up our final two stitches and then we're just going to do one more row and then we're done with our heel. So single crochet into the side and in that skipped stitch. And just like we did before, we are going to slip stitch into the same stitch as our single crochet from row one. It's starting to come together. Pretty neat, huh? All right, so we are gonna do one 
more row. If you look at it close, you can see that it doesn't look very symmetrical. So it's, we're just going to make it symmetrical. <laughs> So chain one, turn, skip the slip stitch, and then single crochet in the next 24 stitches. We're not increasing or decreasing on this row. And when we get back down to this side, we are going to finish off by doing another slip stitch into that same stitch we made our very first single crochet into from row one. And that, my friends, is how we do a short row heel. So cut your yarn, pull it through, finish it off, and now is a great time to stop and weave in your ends while they're accessible. And we will meet back here and I'll show you how to continue on in the leg and do some Fair Isle crochet. All right, so hopefully all your ends are weaved in. Now we're going to be switching back to working in rounds. So we're going to grab our, our main color and we're going to hold our stocking so you're looking at the underside of the foot where the seam is. On the heel, you're going to either count 12 stitches to the center from the left or 13 stitches to the center from the right. Um, you can put a marker in it or just hold on to it. It's up to you. That is where we're going to be um, joining our yarn because we still want the seam to be in the center of our stocking because it won't be as noticeable that way versus if it was on one of the sides. Apparently I'm having some counting issues there. Should have just grabbed a stitch marker. Made it easy on myself. All right, so we are going to just grab our yarn and pull it through the loop, chain one, and then single crochet in that same stitch we joined our yarn in the back loop. We're going to be doing back loop, single crochet. And then back loop, single crochet in the next 11 stitches. So you should have a total of 12 stitches. So when we get to the end here, we're going to do a single crochet two together in the side, starting in the side of our um, heel. Now we're going to do a single crochet two together. So insert your hook into the edge of the heel and pull up a loop and then through and then insert your hook through the next leg stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And then continue your single crochets in the back loop for the next 22 stitches. And then we're going to do a, another single crochet two together. So after your 22 stitches, oh, looks like we have a couple more to do. All right, let's start our single crochet two together. So insert your hook into your stitch under both loops. And pull up a loop. And then insert it into the side of the heel. It doesn't have to be exact, just make sure it's not in a single crochet. And then pull up a loop yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And then continue with your back loop single crochets for the next 12 stitches. And that should bring you to the beginning of your round. This, sti this stitch, 
This round in total should have 48 stitches. and then join to the top of your first single crochet with a slip stitch. All right, so the next row, chain one, single crochet in the same stitch as your chain one and in each stitch around and you will be repeating this round um, until your stocking is done but let's let's move on to the fair aisle a little a little quick fair aisle tutorial so there's a lot of different ways to do fair aisle crochet but I chose to leave my unworked yarn behind um my work instead of you know crocheting over top of it um, i also found that i had to go up a hook size when i was doing the fair isle crochet i don't know if i was just not used to doing it so i was crocheting a little tighter but i will be using my six millimeter furls streamline swirl isn't it gorgeous so for this you're going to need um the chart which you can find on my website there's a link in the description box I've said that a couple times <laughs> and your you're gonna need both of your yarn colors and you'll also need the chart which you can find on my website or in the PDF pattern that's available in my shop so let's let's look at this so you're always going to start on the right side of your chart and work to towards the left and each square equals one back loop only single crochet the oh, let's see if, make sure i get this right the gray squares are your coordinating color and the white squares are your main color um, the black line that you see after um, column number six that just signifies the repeat in that chart um, it's not to scale the whole thing isn't because obviously we have 48 stitches in our round not 18 um, I just blew it up so you could get a sense of the pattern. Okay, and then in in um, the snowflake design, you're gonna have some big gaps where you're not um, using your other color. So I'll show you how to take care of those, but we're gonna trap them. <laughs> so let's start out with our let's see our diamond design first and i'm not going to show you this whole thing i'm just going to give you an idea how to work it you will definitely need the chart to complete the pattern all right since our row round starts with our coordinating color we're going to join that in chain one single crochet in the back loop in that same stitch as chain one but do not finish your stitch normally we get to this point and we would yarn over and pull through both loops but since the next two stitches are in our main color we are just gonna pick up our, we're going to drop the coordinate color and pick up the main color to finish our stitch. So now we do our two main color stitches. One, two, don't finish that stitch. We got to finish it with our next color. So 
pick up your main color and we're just going to leave it drape across the back of your work. Make sure you don't do it too tight or too loose. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but don't be afraid to do a round or two of practice. And then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch, but don't finish it because remember we have to do two more of our uh, main colors right afterwards. Pretty neat, huh? Single crochet. And remember to work all your stitches in the back loop. All right, let's switch back to our main color because we did two, no, excuse me, our coordinating color since we did two main color stitches. Now we're going to do a coordinating color stitch. So as you can see, it, it is a little bit fiddly, but I think the effect is worth it. Let's take a look at the snowflake design. This one has some long stretches where we're not using our um, color. This chart overall, I do want to make a note that you will be repeating this entire chart twice in each round. So you're going to do each row of the chart two times. Too many papers. Okay, so let's see. We are starting this round with our main color. See our white, our main color. Our white squares are our main color. I think the cream yarn was throwing me off. That's why I was having a hard time with that. So we have to do seven stitches. So seven back loop only single crochet. All right, so here we go. And so now for our eighth stitch, we are joining our coordinating color. So let's look here. So we joined our new color and see that big, big um, gap right there. We don't want that because um, things might get snagged on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to trap it. We're going to trap our yarn fl floats. That's called the float every three to four stitches. So what you do is you insert your hook like you're going to make your single crochet. Oh, apparently I'm making a couple single crochets. There we go. So insert your hook like you're making a single crochet. Drape your um, unused color over top of your hook. And then just make your single crochet. It's kind of like when you um, we weave it's crochet over your yarn tails, but you're not, but you're only doing them inter intermittently. If that makes sense. And then when we get to the point where we need to pick up our other color, we just grab it like we did before. And now if we look at the back or the inside, I guess this would be you'll see that the white yarn is trapped behind the green yarn about. Okay, so now we're gonna work on making the cuff and the little hanger for our stocking. Um, so grab your project. You'll need your stocking your stocking what am I saying you're gonna need your the color that you want to use for your cuff and your 5.5 millimeter crochet hook 
So grab your coordinating color. We're just going to insert our hook like we're going to join, drape our new color over top and pull it through. And then chain one. And we're gonna be working in the third, nope. I said that wrong. <laughs> You're going to half double crochet in that same stitch as chain one and in each stitch around your stacking. All right, so when you get to the end of your row, you're going to join to the top of your first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And then chain one. And then for this round, we're going to be working half double crochet stitches in the third loop. So you have the front loop and the back loop on top and then you have the third loop which is like a little back bar on the back side of your half double crochet. It's a little difficult to see on like the joining stitch but it's there. <laughs> And that's gonna pull, push the, um, the, the front V that the front loop and the back loop make, it's gonna push it forward. If I can do it right, there we go. Yarn over first. <laughs> the front loop and the back loop and then there's that little there's that back third loop or back bar you might see it called and you just do a half double crochet into that so you're going to do that all the way around your stocking When you get to the end of your row, you're going to join to the top of that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. Okay, so let's move on to the textured part of the cuff. You are going to chain one. All right, so work a back loop half double crochet in the same stitch as your chain one. And then a front loop half double crochet in the same in the next stitch. And you're just going to repeat that sequence all the way around your stocking. You're going to do back loop half double crochet, front loop half double crochet, back loop half double crochet, front loop half double crochet. You will end with a front loop half double crochet. And now you'll be at the end of your round. You're going to join to the top of that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. Now the next round we're going to do the opposite of this previous round. So we're going to start, we're going to chain one and then starting in the 
front loop this time we're going to make a half double crochet. And then a half double crochet in the back loop in the next stitch. And then the front loop. And then the back loop all the way around. And this time you're going to end your round with a back loop half double crochet. To finish out your cuff you're going to repeat the last two rounds. So you're going to do one more round starting in the back loop and then one more round starting in the front loop. And then join with a slip stitch and cut your yarn and pull your tail through to finish off. Now the last thing we need to do is make our little hanger. We're going to crochet um, along a strip and then we're just going to sew it onto the inside. You'll grab your yarn and your hook. I'm just using the same color as my um, cuff. Be sure to leave a long tail and then you're going to chain 26. And then you're going to single crochet in the second chain from your hook and in each chain across. This will give you 25 single crochets. All right, for row two, chain one and then turn. And this row we're going to be doing slip stitches all the way across. This will give our hanger a little bit of support so we don't have to worry about getting all stretched out or breaking. So slip stitch in the same stitch as chain one and in each stitch acro across. <laughs> And again, you should have 25 stitches. Row three, chain one and turn. This will be our last row. We're going to single crochet in each slip stitch that we made. So starting in that same stitch as chain one. Now I don't know if this is where you're supposed to insert your hook, but this is how I did it. And just single crochet all the way across. And again you'll end up with 25 single crochets.
when you get to the end of your row here we're gonna cut our yarn and leave a, a longer tail because we're gonna be sewing the hanger onto the stocking next All right, you'll need a you'll need your yarn needle for this next part. So all we're going to do is fold our little hanger in half. And then we're going to find the back of our stocking towards the, the bottom of the cuff. And we're just going to um whip stitch it in place. Feels a little bit fiddly to do, but it doesn't have to be exact. So to whip stitch it, I just um, put my yarn needle through to the back and then back to the front and then inserted it both of the ends of my hanger all the way to the back of the stocking and then came back to the front. I did that with both yarn tails going opposite directions and then I just um, weaved weaved in my ends and there we have it, stocking. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed putting it together for you. Um, these stockings are so fun to make and I, I can't wait to see them. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ding that bell so you can get notified each time I release a new video. And also, if you would like to hang out with me and a bunch of other awesome crocheters, don't forget to join my um, crochet group on Facebook.